I want to share something about the chapter 4 of the, pray, the Power of a Praying Wife by Stormy Omarshan. The title is His Sexuality. We're hitting the top priorities in a man's life right away in, in his book. I feel if we can contribute to our husband's happiness in these areas most dear to their hearts, we will greater success making inroads in other areas that are crucial to their well-being. After 20 years of praying with women about their failing, struggling, and unfulfilling or dead marriages, I've observed that frequently the sexual relationship is a low priority in their minds. It isn't that the wife cares nothing about that part of her life. It's that there are so many other things screaming for her attention such as raising children, work, finances, managing a home, emotional stress, exhaustion, sickness, and marital strife. In the wife's juggling of priorities, sex can end up on the bottom of her list. Some women allow week after week, month after month, six months, a year or even more to go by without having sexual relationships or relations with their husbands for one reason or another. When disaster hits, they are surprised, even though the wife must have felt fine about this arrangement. Her husband was being neglected in an important part of his being. For a wife, sex comes out of affection. She doesn't want to be affectionate with a man who makes her feel angry, hurt, lonely, disappointed, overworked, unsupported, uncared for, or abandoned. But for a husband, sex is pure need. His eyes, ears, brain, and emotions get clouded if he doesn't have that release. He has trouble hearing anything his wife says or seeing what she needs when that area of his being is neglected. Wives sometimes have it, have it backwards, they think. We can have sex after we get these other issues settled. But actually, there is a far greater chance of settling the other issues if sex comes first. That's why it's important to make, to make sex a matter of priority in your marriage. Weather or conditions are perfect or whether you feel like you feel like it or not isn't the point. The point is meeting the needs of your husband and keeping communication lines open. A man can easily be made to feel insignificant, beaten down, discouraged, destroyed, or tempted in the area of his being. There's probably no more important means of fulfillment for a man and no area where he is more vulnerable. Sexual problems are quite common because many women don't have a clear grasp of what God's view is on the subject. But the Bible is crystal clear. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not ha have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another except with the consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. 1 Corinthians 7, 4 to 5 Sex between husband and wife is God's idea unless we're fasting and praying for weeks at a time or are experiencing physical infirmity or separation. There is no excuse not to engage in it regularly. When we're married, our bodies are not our own. We owe each other physical attention and we're not to deprive one another. The frequency of sex depends on the other person's need, not ours alone. If your attitude about having sex comes down to only what you need or what you don't want, then you don't have God's perspective. He says our body is to be used to comfort and complete the other person. Something is built up in the man and the marriage when this need is met by his wife. Something is diminished when it is not. 
you leave yourselves open for temptation and far more destruction than you can imagine. When this area of intimate communication is neglected, it can happen to anyone and that's why the sexual aspect of your marriage and your husband's sexuality need to be covered in prayer and it's best to start praying about it before you have to. If your husband desires sex more frequently and you are the one keeping it from happening, pray for God to help you change your ways. I found that the most difficult time to deal with the issue of sex is when the children are small and can do much for themselves. By the time you get them in bed, you are exhausted, exhausted and ready to drop. You're thinking about getting to sleep as soon as possible while your husband has been making other plans for you. You're thinking about getting to sleep as soon as possible while your husband has, has been making other plans for you. Your op options are to totally shut him down and say, forget about it, I'm tired. Or communicate how exhausted you are and hope he'll say, no problem, you get some rest. Or proceed with a bad attitude and make him feel guilty or angry. But I found a fourth option which works much, much better. Try this and see it if it doesn't work for you. When your husband communicates to you what he has in in mind as only a husband can do don't roll your eyes and sigh deeply instead say okay give me t give me 15 minutes or 10 or 20 or whatever you need during that time do something to make yourself feel attractive for example take a shower or a relaxing bath put on scented body lotion or his favorite perfume have perfume have perfume you wear only for these times alone with him Comb your hair, wash your face, and prepare it with products that make your skin look dewy and fresh. Put on lip gloss and blush. Sleep in your lingerie you know he finds irresistible. Don't worry about your imperfections. He's not thinking about them. If you feel self-conscious, wear a beautiful nightgown that covers areas that bother you. While you're doing this, pray for God to give you renewed energy, strength, vitality, and a good attitude. Hopefully, when you're ready, your husband will find you worth you were worth the wait you'll be surprised at how much better sex partner you are when you feel good about yourself you'll be happier and you'll both sleep better this is small investment of time to seek great rewards in your marriage sometimes there is the opposite situation where the wife is sexually neglected by her husband his lack of interest can happen for many reasons physical mental or emotional but if he is content to go month after month without sex, then something is wrong. If there is no physical problem hindering him, maybe he's having the feelings of failure, disappointment, depression, or hopelessness that need to be addressed. Prayer can help reveal what the problem is and how to solve it. Get professional help if you need to. It's cheaper than a divorce or the physical, emotional, and mental ravages of a, of a dead marriage. Don't let negative emotions like resentment, bitterness, self-pity, and forgiveness build up in you. Keep yourself healthy and attractive. If you don't think highly enough of yourself to take care of your body, do it as an act of kindness for him. Have a special laundry that he likes and put it on when you're with him. Get a new hairstyle. Surprise him with a new attitude. Keep your mind refreshed and growing. Basically, don't do nothing. Bad things develop when the sexual parts of marriage is neglected. Don't let that happen to you. Keep an eye on the calendar and refuse to allow much time to go by without coming together physically. If it has been too long, ask God to show you why and help you rem remedy the situation. And remember, it's never too late to pray for sexual purity no matter what has occurred in either of the past sometimes sexual problems in a marriage happen as a result of sexual experiences before the marriage pray to be set free and healed of those memories purity happens the moment it takes root in the heart prayer is where it starts don't jeopardize or forfeit what god has for your marriage by neglecting to pray for this vital area of your life